think it's stuff like this that gives me trust issues. Trust issues. Trust issues. Welcome to the Trust Issues Podcast. We have trust issues with a traditional society dictated path, with the status quo, with the whole get an education, land a job, and work tirelessly until you're six feet under. It's time to upgrade your life with the help of us. I'm Erica. And I'm Kyle Auckland. We're a husband and wife duo, but we're also entrepreneurs, biohackers, and business builders. Every week, we're dedicated to having purposeful conversations with each other and leading experts on topics like wellness, relationships, and entrepreneurship. Subscribe to Trust Issues Podcast if you're looking for bold topics, honest dialogue, and valuable lessons. Welcome back to another episode of the Trust Issues Podcast. Today, we're going to do a little Q&A. Got a couple questions from the audience on IG. We're going to give you a shout out if you asked a question. We're so excited to chat through these. And the first one is from at Rebecca.Macon. And she said, how do you prioritize your marriage while being business owners? (laughs) Kyle, you can take a stab at this first. (laughs) Well, I love these. Like, I love answering questions like this. This is like such a fun part of the podcast. But it's like, I feel like we've we've really had to work on that over the past couple of years. It's like, and especially this past year, if they're having a child, it's like, things can really go by the wayside. So that's been, I feel like recently a newer road we've had to navigate where like, we've really had to really prioritize things like before without our child, we could, you know, kind of wing it with like setting up days to do things together or time slots. But um, now you remember that life. Not remember really. the life? Like I don't even remember what that was like to be like, it, oh, you just want to go out tonight? Like go get a din- like go get a meal, like go to dinner, let's yes, go on a date. It, it it that like memory has like faded, you know? In all the good re- I don't know. I'm no, like, it's it's a good thing. It's yes, the evolution yes. of our life, but it's very different now. We have to be super intentional about that, it. And that's I was gonna say that's that's literally the word that we've kind of like we've had some hard conversations about like, hey, we have to start dating each other. We have to start do- so it's like we've really set up boundaries with us being able to do have our personal time do our things go dream together go you know even if it's like good lord just going on a walk like yeah we've 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 kind of it used to be like we need date night and now it's like hey let's just have 30 minutes like we just said yesterday like 30 minutes like one day a week we're gonna start just me and you working out together yeah like have our time like a special time it's like small things like that well i think like when you are in this role of parenthood and business owners, you have to kind of take the pressure off from it being like this magnanimous thing. Like when we spend time together, it can be, like I said the other day, I was like, is my idea of being with my husband always going to be a date night, getting dressed up, going to a restaurant? Honestly, no. Like I think about doing life with my husband. And so I'm like, Let's go on a walk. Let's go to the park. Let's go. We are so excited for this weekend. I just came back from travel. We've been podcasting this week. It's been a busy week as a family. And we're like family weekend. We're going to go to the park. We're going to go and have a picnic. We're going to go and spend outside and we can bring our child and, you know, Dawson can come with us everywhere we go. So I think it's like allowing it to be just integrated in the every day and the every week. It doesn't have to be, you know, because you had mentioned you're like, oh, it'd be so nice to take a trip. And I'm like, yes, I'd love to take a trip. We want to go down to 30A. We're going to go to the beach. We'd love yeah. to do that. Is that realistic for us right now in this season? No, not really. Yeah. So, but we're not going to wait for that in order to give our marriage time yes. and energy. So yes. it's like, how can we integrate it throughout the week, throughout our day? And yeah, it's like little things like that. Going on a walk together. We're going to start working out. We just said that working yeah. out together like twice a week. And that's, we like to do those things though. So I think like figure sure. out what do you actually like to do with your partner, or with your spouse? Yeah. Like, we don't, I don't know, like we honestly cook better at home. You make a better steak than 95% of the restaurants here in Nashville. Like yeah. I'd rather us make a meal, have like a picnic in our backyard, like actually spend time together. And I mean, I also think this comes down to the person's love language. Like for sure. I think quality time is a top love language for us. So yes. we both just want to be together, Yes, you know? So we, we prioritize our marriage by, at the end of the day, like it doesn't matter what we have on the to-do list. It doesn't matter what we have to get done in our business. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's like we always have dinner as a family every single day. It's, Actually, like, our one, it's like our one staple thing. It's like no matter what. it's We always have dinner as a family. Yeah. And someone asked me that the other day, like do you guys cook almost every day? I'm like, yeah, we almost we cook almost every single day. Every, every meal. 
every meal we cook and yeah. we're home. We're so grateful that we're able to do that. But we do cook and have dinner as a family every single night at five yeah. o'clock. It's such a, spe- it's like one of my favorite, it's my favorite part of the day is like having dinner, sitting down the whole, you know, like Dawson, like, the three of us, you yeah. know, we'll just, we have our time together and it's, it's special. So we, we have that time together. I think it's figuring out in your life what, you know, you actually want to do with each other. Like we're just, we're doing life together. Yeah. So that's how we prioritize Well, it. And even just to kind of wrap it up with that, it's like, I think before we were so focused on like finding those times for a date night, a trip or this. And it's like, like you said, we've, we've peeled that down or peeled it back more to be like, no, let's, let's highlight the small things that are so easily forgotten as like moments together. Like we said, having dinner. It's like, there were times when, you know, Dawson was smaller and like, things were tougher and it was like we were just learning how to be parents and it's like we'd still be having dinner but it was like just an afterthought and we weren't even thinking about it but now it's like we're like we look at dinner and we're like oh no phones intentional this is a family moment like and you then after that moment's over you're like man that was that was like so nice you know so it's like highlighting the small moments we've done same thing with our walks too like we try to leave our phones like the, when we bring it by like the bottom of the stroller, the bottom of Dawson's wagon. It's yeah. like, that's our time to talk. It's our time to just be together. Yeah. And I mean, we're very much like our family is all of us, like yeah. the three of us. Obviously, we take time for just ourselves, too. But like we're so in that season right now where it's the three of us. And it's yeah. like it's a sweet season to be like in that. And and it's and I want our son to see that. I want our son to see that like. We actually genuinely love to be together well, as a family. And we're fa- we're actually seeing it and realizing like how fleeting that time is, like how fast it goes. So like, I think realizing like his first couple months, you're like, oh, like you're almost like, hurry up. I want this phase to be over so life can get like better or whatever, like back to normal. Kind I think of it's feeling. hard in the beginning. Oh, New- my newborn word. stage you're, is hard. Yes. But like now you're kind of like, oh, like we're finding a rhythm and it's like, I almost want to slow down a little bit now because it's like going too quick, you know? So Isn't it's like- that life though? It is. That's just literally life. That's everything, yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. At Claire.Trumbull asked, outsourcing, how do you find people to hire and trust them? Uh, this is a hard question. It, it is. I, I say my most direct answer to that is if you have a- somewhat inner circle or people that you trust or you know people mentoring you or whatever like directly ask them like hey do you who do you use is there anyone you use for this who you can trust like can vouch for like it, start with your inner circle and then you know kind of work your way referrals out. yes exactly like, who do you know that knows someone else so for example i'll just give a couple shout outs to the amazing people on our team so um one my executive assistant jen Oh. Can't live without Jen. Dude. She literally runs my life. And if you are like a customer of mine, if you've ever like sent an email, like Jen is manning all of that. She's literally. like our business mom. Yeah. She's literally <laughs> like, I'm like, hold me. Yeah. <laughs> hold me, Jen. She does everything. And she actually came through my business. So she's yeah. in the business that I'm in, in Monate. And I had, I don't know, like even how it really happened, but I put like a BPA out and I was like, I'm looking for someone to help. And I had worked with so many different people. Like when I tell you I've had so many outsourcing fails, like so many times. I've had so many assistants in person and virtual that didn't work. And it was very much, I think, with her. It's like she just understood what it is that I do. And also for me, I really enjoy working with people that are more local and being able to be in person quite, you know, regularly. It doesn't need to be a weekly or even monthly basis, but just being able to see each other and just knowing that she understood what I did and understood my business and understood the back end of it, she was literally the perfect hire. But I think sometimes too, it's like you have to understand with outsourcing, it can be a incorrect fit if like you're not setting expectations to start. So mm. one of the things I've learned is also just when you're looking for someone you're outsourcing is giving them a, these are the obviously the tasks that I need you to do. These are the tasks that I'm expecting, but also this is how I like to work because do you actually know that, you know, how the person that you're going to work with, how they like to work? Are they much more prompt? Do they like to communicate in a specific type of way? I think uh, you're going to have a higher success rate of working with someone if you both can understand how you like to work. So Jen, amazing, like never leave me if you're listening. I love you. (laughs) Literally, she is the best. She's the goat. And then another one is example is actually Christy. 
um, our podcast producer, and she ended up, we had known each other from my business. We had, we're local here in Nashville, and I had put out like on Instagram that we were going to, I was going to go to a Pilates class. And so we like literally went to Pilates together, had like a great afternoon, or I think it was like a Saturday morning or something. And then I had just kind of briefly mentioned that we were going to be doing a podcast and she like believed in it and she believed in the idea and she was excited about it. And I think that has been one of the coolest things about working with Christy. And then Christy brought on producer Courtney and then we have Courtney (laughs) who's here too. And she's like, we have just this dream team now of our podcast team. But I think like it started with knowing that Christy believed in what we were doing. And I think that's another thing is when you're outsourcing is like, does that person believe in your mission and believe in the thing that you're working on in the project that you have? Is it just a job for them or is it something else? Like I think that has been such a key thing in the success of working with people that I have on my team. I have Ellen. She's my marketing manager. She helps with a ton of stuff in my business too. And she believes in me and she believes in what I'm doing. And she like genuinely, when I get on meetings with her, she's so excited about what I'm creating, what I'm doing and my ideas. And that to me is invaluable. So if you're having a hard time with outsourcing and finding people to work with, you know, obviously there are certain roles where it's just like a contractor. Maybe it's like you just need a graphic designer to make you Instagram graphics. Yeah. Like, but if you're looking for more long term and people that you can really work with and trust, I think there's an element of they need to believe in what it is that you do because then there's that like you all have the same mission. You all have the same goal. Yeah. And I can say that 10 out of 10, that's the team that we have now who work for us. And it's like, it's so much fun. Like we literally do this podcast and we're laughing behind the scenes yes. because we're all having a good time. And to me, that's like the key. I want people to work with us and for us that also are enjoying it. You know, I think like that's the goal. Okay. So our next question here is from at a help meet for him. Do you have any time blocking tips with kids while I'm home without my spouse? That's well, here's the thing. I mean, we're, we're home a lot together. Yeah. So it's like, we're definitely blessed with that. But say when I left, what did you do? I had to go on a little trip this past week, which I've never done that. It's the first time I've ever left you with Dawson. It is. Uh, How did you get things done while I was gone? Honestly, I, (laughs) you have, when you're, when you're, solo parenting you have to lower your expectations on like what can get done and i know that's not ideal for you know everyone for a long amount of time but it's like you need to go maybe whatever you're working on or whatever your vision is and you know you're going to be solo parenting a lot it's like maybe extend the timeline a little bit because you know your capacity is going to be lower because obviously you're dealing with i don't know how many children you have or what you but for us obviously it's one child and it's like our little wild man it's like he is very involved, so he takes up a lot of your time. So if you're with him, you can't just like set you him literally down. can't. You can't, and it's like, and I try, but like I know, like when he goes, if down I for pull out my laptop, he slams slams it shut. Yes, like so, he's like no mom. So I can only imagine he's not even two <laughs> multiple children dealing with that same thing, and it's literally when you were gone, it was like okay, I know every day he's going to nap for at least an hour. So I will have this time to do this, this, and this. And it's like, I made sure when that, that came and my window was open, I was dialed in on the things I needed to do. And I got them done as quickly as I could, you know, in the right way, making sure they're done correctly. But it's like that, that's kind of how, and obviously there, I wanted to do more, but I'm like, I know I can't cause this is my window and it is what it is. And that's just the way it's going to be, you know? Yeah. I would say the same too. You know, when I've been with D-Man on my own and it's me trying to get my huge to-do list tackled. Yeah. I mean, I think this is where outsourcing is super important, kind of pointing back, what I was, yeah. you know, because yes, 100%, I will try to work when he is napping. For sure. You know, I try to do little things if he's preoccupied. And I hate to be on my phone a lot with him. That's Same. the thing. I, yes. It's like when I'm with my son, I really don't want him to see every time he looks up at me to me be looking down on my phone. Because he knows. He's aware. He's so aware yeah. of it. And he's only 15 months and he yeah. gets it. Like he literally will try to take your phone from you. <laughs> he's like, no, play with me. He gets pissed. Yes. And which understandably so, like he's in that stage where he wants that. He wants mommy and daddy's attention. So when he's napping is really the most golden time. And then yeah. when he goes to bed and yeah. I will say it's not ideal for me sometimes because I do need to wind down. I have a, I need to have a good decent nighttime routine to be able to get good sleep. 
But sometimes I have to sacrifice depending on what the day looked like. When he goes down, our son goes down to bed at six, which we do try to get him in bed pretty early so that we can have, have time. time. And I pull my laptop out. I'm put my blue blockers on. I sit on the couch and I'm like, what do I need to get done? What do I need to respond to? Who yep. do I need to email? <clears throat> um, what do I need to post? Maybe I'm posting a reel. So I try to do that kind of stuff. And then um, obviously I think outsourcing is key. I mean, there is no way I could do everything that I do today without our team. Yeah. But obviously if you're starting out in your business and you don't have the capacity to hire someone full time yet or something, maybe you start with a couple hours a week. You know, can you pay someone $20, $25 an hour to work with you yeah. a couple hours a week? You know, maybe assess your budget, take 10% of what you're making in your business so that you can outsource that. And if you're not making it enough, create more income ASAP. Sure. So that you can. And that's going to come from the sacrifice of working later, you know, when your babies are in sl asleep or even waking up earlier when they're still sleeping in the morning. So it's 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 sacrifice. It's hard. But, yeah. you know, and I, when you say time blocking, I think time blocking is obviously the most efficient way to work. So that would look like at nighttime on a Tuesday night, Dawson's asleep. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to get out all of my like, you know, kind of checklist things. I need to email this person. I need to respond to this person. I need to send this person a hair, car hair care cart. Yeah. You know, those kinds of things that I can kind of just knock through. Um, or maybe another night I'm going to sit there and I'm going to do reels or, you know, I have to like edit a reel. I need to post a TikTok and like I'll kind of get the content that I already mm. had ready. I'll get it posted. So, you know, time blocking is really great to be effective and efficient and task blocking too. So yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. And honestly, final thing with this is like, it's so easy to get into the societal structure of like Monday through Friday. And then you live for the weekend like that. Like you have this two days, this but it's good. like a way you can change that. Say if your spouse works all week in your home with the child, it's like change your structure. Like for us, we were like, okay, on everyone likes to sit down and watch TV shows and unwind. It's like, so we were like, all right, Thursday nights and like Friday nights is when we will, you know, sit down and watch our shows and have our like unwind time. But it's like, if you know your spouse is going to be home on the weekends, you might need to switch your days around where like maybe it's Monday and Tuesday night, you kind of do some of the weekend things and like Saturday and Sunday while your spouse is home, that's where you can get more work done. Yeah. Like that's an easy switch to change when you know, like take advantage of your spouse being home. So like, yeah, I think it's like understanding that sometimes there's like, you know, initial delayed gratification that yes. you have to yes. go through and initial sacrifice you need to make like yes. do now what most people won't so later you can have what most people can't you know you, you got to have sacrifice somewhere yeah. so figure out where you can sacrifice figure out where you can put in some time and eventually you're going to have some more wiggle room you're going to be able to have maybe some income that you can outsource to people but when you're starting a business you're bootstrapping it a little bit and you yep. just got to figure it out so you know sit down with your calendar and figure out what that can work yeah okay last question is from at emily duzak and she asked how do you make big financial decisions together, not just budgets? It's tough because I think this question really is boiled down to how much of the same page you and your, your person are on, you and your spouse are on. And it's like, because those, I know for me and you, we are very open with our communication. We are very direct. We, we're, we're always on the same page, even if it's something that's uncomfortable because we have hard conversations. So like whatever we bring up with, whether it's a, a big purchase with a car or whatever, it's like we've put our time and effort into that. And each of us know that it wasn't just like on a wing, like where it's like, we've really done our homework on this purchase. So like, you know, what do you think? Well, we've talked about it. It doesn't just come out of nowhere. So yeah, it's like, how do we make big financial decisions? We dream together first. Yes. We talk about goals together first. You know, you don't just go to the person that you're with and say, hey, I want to make this huge purchase. Yes. It's like, we don't, we have so much foreground that's already like laid that, because yes. we're already like, you've been talking about, for example, last year we both got, got new cars. Yeah. You bought your truck and I upgraded my Cadillac. And you had been talking about getting your truck literally <laughs> since like 2018, you know, years yes. you'd been driving around your Hyundai Elantra. It was a paid off vehicle. You were literally driving. I mean, I remember people being like, really, that's the car you drive. And Kyle's like, yeah, like it's our paid off car. Heck like, yeah. it's fine, you know, and we were <laughs> proud of that, you know, because we had laid so much of our financial foundation. Yeah that we we live within our means, we live below our means, we like are really smart with our money, we like invest and and those types of purchases just don't happen on the whim, right? So yeah. it's like 
But we had been talking about it and 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 talking about it. And then it's like together we figure out when's the right time. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, now's the right time. So you just, I think verbalizing it with, I think that's just communication. Uh, just that's, talk yes. about the things you want. Talk about the things you dream of. It doesn't mean that it needs to happen tomorrow it, that's with some thing. of those big purchases. I've been talking about building a house. For years. For years. Years, we've, yes. Years and years and years. And it's like we went and started looking at houses, looking at properties. We had been talking about it for years. When we bought our land where we're building our home, it wasn't just like out of nowhere. It yeah. was something we had been like really praying about, really like talking yeah. to each other about. And then when it came up, it was just the right time. Yeah. And that like the property purchase was such a good example because it's like years ago that came up. So literally we were like, okay, this is, we can't do this now, but this is our, this is our vision. So it was like, I'm going to set up a separate account. So like every time money comes in, a little bit of that is going to go here towards like a down payment. And it was like, I know a lot of people do that, but it was like, as the time went on, it was like, oh, this is becoming more real. And as you know, the goal with, with money would start to grow. It was like, this is something that can be, it's can be real and it's not as scary anymore because yeah. you've been slowly working to that goal with your spouse. Yeah. So it was like when it came time to finally make the purchase, it was exciting. It wasn't so scary. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening to the Trust Issues podcast. If you love this episode, make sure you leave a review on iTunes and we'll see you next time.